I don't think we realize the power of fashion. Someone has a skinny jeans, skinny jeans comes into the church. We look in the world and we see an athlete with a mohawk, and the mohawk comes into the church. Somebody in, the, in Hollywood wears a short skirt, short skirts come into the church. A few years ago, I decided to pray before dressing. I literally asked God, what tie should I wear? What suit? Well, I'm very serious. I said, Father, and I hold several ties. I don't have that many, but I hold the ones I have. And I said, Lord, which tie should I wear? Do you know just a tie can turn someone off? Are you listening to me? Father, I want to exert maximum effect for you. What tie should I wear? What shirt should it be, white or blue? Those are my usual two choices. Should I wear a black suit, a blue, a gray, a charcoal? And I ask him these things. Let me tell you something. If you do that, let me speak to the ladies first. Ladies, you're very attractive. God bless you. Don't be angry with me. When Paul speaks of decoration and fashion, he always addresses only the women. Is this mic working? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, listen to me. Next time you dress for church or work to go anywhere, you pray to God and say, Father, tell me what to wear. Let me tell you, give you a guarantee, particularly for church. If you pray that prayer and you listen for the voice of the Spirit, the dress styles of the church, Amen. the Lord will tell you, my daughter, change your entire closet. None of it is suitable for my house. And go to Walmart, get a brand new wardrobe. Or Kmart, wherever you shop. <laughs> Dress has to reflect the image of God. I remember many years ago, I came to uh, this part of the world to preach at a, was an Indonesian church somewhere. And the pastor picked me up. He said, are you hungry? I said, yes. Not starving, but hungry. We went to a restaurant. So the lady brought us the menus. So we chose what we wanted. We didn't collaborate. We just chose. When she came she to, to, to take our orders, she realized we had all chosen non-meat. Uh, items. So she said, are you vegetarian? Now, we weren't trying to impress anyone with anything. But the choice in a restaurant was a witness. Are you listening to me? If we had chosen fried alligator <laughs> and, you know, lobsters and worms, She would not have said, are you carnivores? <laughs> are you with me? Because she's surrounded by carnivores. But she saw a selection pattern that varied from what she was accustomed to. And it touched her heart. And she said, are you vegetarian? Then she said, I want to be a vegetarian, but I can't. I told the pastor, that's a cry for help. And I said, look. Get councils on dads and foods. Have the whole church board sign it. Come back and find this woman. Give it to her. I don't know if you ever did it. But that was a cry for help. Amen. I was, a, <laughs> I was in leaving South Africa. And uh, came to the immigration officer. As I was coming, you know, you've got to stand behind a line, those of you who travel a lot, before you get to the officer. So he said to me, come, Pastor. I, I said, why do you call me that? He said, but you look like one. <laughs> this is no joke. The recording angel is hearing me. Now, I left him and I went to another officer. You know, in, the, in these days of security, you have to see several people. He said, come preacher. Now, he hadn't heard the interaction with me and the previous person. I said, why do you say that? He said, but it's so obvious that you're a preacher. I was living in an airport somewhere, and uh, I came to the, I live in Nigeria. 
or some West African country. I came to a, the first line of contact with the officials. And he said, come, Bishop. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, okay. I said, why do you call me that? He said, but it's obvious you're a preacher. And he took his hat off. He said, pray for me. <laughs> and I prayed right there at the airport. He said, bless me. He took his hat. He said, bless me. And he bowed his head. And I blessed him. I just shook my head and I walked away. I was living in another country somewhere. And this, uh, no, I was going to a campus to preach. I was conducting a university crusade in some country. So the guy who was driving me, he and I were traveling and, you know, I wanted some chewing gum. You know, Americans are always chewing. That's how they identified abroad, always chewing. And so I pulled into a little gas station. My driver pulled in and I went to a little store, you know, 7-Eleven kind of thing. I said, do you have a juice? I wanted some juice. The lady said, yes. So she went to get the juice. I observed the juice, the juice was right next to the alcohol. So I said, is that juice? It's right next to the alcohol. She said, I'd never give you alcohol. I said, why not? She said, you're a preacher. <laughs> I said, how do you? She said, but it's so obvious. I left that store, went to the next little store to get gum because the first store had no chewing gum. I said, good afternoon, sir. He said, good afternoon, preacher. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. Why do you call me that? He said, the anointing is all over you. Now, that began to happen when I started to pray and say, Lord, tell me what to wear. Amen. And God doesn't tell me to wear Superman's cape. Just simple, basic. But it seems to me, when you attempt to cooperate with God, he moves upon people's hearts. To recognize his presence in you. Amen. Listen to me. You try it. You pray. <laughs> Ladies first. You pray. <laughs> and so Lord. What should I wear? And when the spirit speaks. Stifle your pride. Suffocate it. Choke it to death. And do what the spirit says. Choose as the spirit leads. You will have testimonies that I am giving. My brothers and sisters, we must reflect the glory of God in everything we do. Next time you go to buy shoes, ladies. <laughs> Pray. For two reasons. One, you want to reflect God's glory. Two, the money is God's money. Come on, say amen. I have been to churches. Men walking on stilts. You know, a man on the stilts. I have been to church. All those I'm speaking the truth. I I mean, hi. Towering over me. I said, if she had prayed. She would not be wearing that.